The last time LeBron James wasn't in the NBA Finals, the world was a very different place, let alone the NBA itself. Obama was still serving his first term as president, Instagram hadn't even been created yet, and get this, my career in NBA 2K had just made its very first appearance in the game. Yeah, that means LeBron has been in the finals for almost all of my career's existence. Anyways, today I want to focus on what the NBA itself looked like the last time he wasn't competing for a title. So many years have passed in the LeBron era that it's pretty easy to lose track of what's changed since he's been the center of attention for so long. I mean, the fact that an app like Snapchat didn't even exist the last time he was in the finals says a lot. Oh, speaking of things that didn't exist back then, the Hardwood Amino app wasn't around either. This app has a ton of entertaining features for you. One I wanted to focus on today is the live layer feature that allows you to find the best place to interact with other members. It tells you exactly how many members are online, what they're currently doing, and you can click on the tab to take you to that action. As you can see here, I can easily find my favorite feature which is the public chat room that allows you to interact with everybody in real time. Also, this is an amazing place to start writing NBA articles if that type of thing has ever interested you. If you follow my Twitter, you may have realized that sometimes I link a blog post that I wrote and that comes straight from this app. You can write about whatever you'd like and once you're happy with the post, you can share it to Hardwood's community of over 80,000 diehard NBA fans and you can also share it with all your social media accounts. And of course, there's plenty of other activities you can do like vote on polls or take quizzes that are made from people in the community. In the year that I've been using Hardwood, they've only been getting better and more engaging by adding more features, so I definitely recommend this for you. If you'd like to download this app, the link for the iOS and Android versions are going to be in the comment section and in the description. Hope to see you there. The year is 2018 and LeBron is currently playing in his 8th straight NBA Finals in what will almost certainly result in his 6th Finals loss. But the last time a finals didn't even feature his presence was in the year 2010 and a lot of the storylines that are going on right now hadn't even had their seeds planted yet. Just to give you an idea, this was the 2009-2010 season and Blake Griffin, James Harden, Steph Curry, DeMar DeRozan, Drew Holiday, and Danny Green had just been drafted to start their rookie years. Funny enough, LeBron would eventually go on to play and beat each one of them except Blake Griffin in a playoff series. Not only was Steve Nash still playing in the league, but he was at a pretty high level considering he was 35 years old. He qualified for his second to last all-star team averaging 16 points and 11 assists per game and in his last year with Amari Stoudemire, they would lead the Phoenix Suns to the Western Conference Finals where they'd ultimately lose to Kobe Bryant's Lakers. To this date, it remains the last time the Suns appeared in the playoffs. Over in Portland, a top 5 what-if story in NBA history was in the midst of unfolding with Brandon Roy. This was long enough ago that he was still on the All-Star team averaging 21 points a game and helping to lead the Blazers to a 51 season along with a 24-year-old LaMarcus Aldridge. That team also featured Greg Oden who appeared in 21 games before disappearing for 3 years until, well, yeah, until he ended up in the finals with LeBron James. <laughs> so the last time that LeBron wasn't in the finals, the Suns almost made it there and the Blazers were still trying to make Brandon Roy, Oden, and Aldridge work out. That's how long it's been. Kevin Durant was only 21 years old in a time where snake jokes weren't flooding NBA Twitter and behind his 30 points per game that season, the OKC Thunder made their first NBA playoff appearance on a 51 season that landed them the 8th seed in the West. This was also KD's first All-Star appearance, Westbrook had yet to make an All-Star team and James Harden was still rocking headbands and had yet to even start a single game in his career. Darren Williams and Carlos Boozer, <laughs> yeah you heard that right, were still considered a formidable duo and Boozer was on his way to becoming a big part of what many considered to be the greatest free agency class of all time. Think about that, in the time LeBron James has been making the NBA Finals, Darren Williams went from a premier point guard to a backup in the 2017 Finals, meanwhile Boozer went from a top free agent prospect to slipping out of the league altogether. Speaking of slipping out of the league, Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming were not only both still active NBA players back then, but they were both still a part of the Houston Rockets roster. Well, at least to start this season anyways. T-Mac eventually made his way to the Knicks, but that's still something to wrap your mind around. The duo of T-Mac and Yao Ming still technically existed on paper the last time LeBron wasn't in the finals, and in either case, they both played a bit longer in the league. Ironically enough, the Golden State Warriors were on their way to a 26-win season and they'd only made the playoffs one time in the previous 16 years to 2010. As of today, that Warriors roster only features two active NBA players, Stephen Curry and Anthony Tolliver. Neither Draymond Green nor Klay Thompson had even been drafted yet and Curry was sharing the backcourt with Monte Ellis who was still the premier scorer averaging 25 a game. Al Horford was still a part of the Hawks core that was always kind of contending but not really and it was between him, Josh Smith, and Joe Johnson. 
Johnson was averaging 21 a game and Smith was still showing promise as a high flyer who we now know never realized his full potential. Jamal Crawford was also a part of that roster at only 29 years of age at the time and had just won his first of three six man of the year awards. Larry Brown was still a coach in the NBA and funny enough he was a coach of the now defunct Charlotte Bobcats that actually made it into that year's playoffs. This was so long ago in fact that LeBron's ex-teammate Larry Hughes played games for Charlotte that year and Steven Jackson was there beside him putting up 21 points a game. <laughs> yes, the same Steven Jackson you always see on TV and on Instagram, he was a significant scorer in the league the last time LeBron wasn't in the finals, that's how long it's been. Carmelo Anthony hadn't even been traded to the Knicks yet. He was spending his last moments in Denver and was teammates with the 34 year old Chauncey Billups who was the second leading scorer for the squad that season. Who was the third leading scorer you asked? Hennessy Smith, who, <laughs> who's now ruining all-time performances in the NBA Finals, go figure. Chris Paul still had a year left as a member of the New Orleans Hornets and was appearing as an all-star in the league for only the third time in his young five-year career. His main teammates, an all-star caliber David West who now plays on the bench for the Golden State Warriors, Paige Stoyakovic, and Emeka Okafor. Up in Indiana, the Pacers hadn't even entered the Paul George era that would later on challenge LeBron's vice grip on the East. He hadn't even been drafted yet. Instead, they were being led, well, for the lack of a better term, <laughs> by Danny Granger who was putting up 24 points a game and Troy Murphy who was rolling up on the end of his career. Michael Red, yes, Michael Red. I, I really doubt some of you even know who he is, but he was still active on the Milwaukee Bucks and Brandon Jennings could have been argued as a better pick than Stephen Curry at the time, especially when he put up 55 points against the Warriors in just his 7th NBA game. Oh, and also check out the graphic. At that point in the season, he was on his way to joining some elite company as a rookie, averaging 20 points and 5 assists. Speaking of the graphic, you see anything interesting? Yeah, AI was still playing in the NBA the last time LeBron James hadn't made the finals. He spent about 30 seconds on the Grizzlies before returning to Philly to wrap up his career. So now we're up to Iverson, T-Mac, and Yao Ming on the list of players that are on the other side of this bridge. Three of the five starters on the Pistons' lone championship team were still playing in Detroit. Yes, Ben Wallace, Rip, and Tayshaun Prince all logged over 45 games for the Pistons that season as they fell to a 27-win team, and not much has changed because they really haven't made a ton of progress since that time. John Wall was not even an NBA player yet. The Wizards still had their trio of Jameson, Arenas, and Karan Butler as active players for at least half the season. And as it stands, the last time LeBron didn't make the finals, Gilbert Arenas was still the leading scorer for the Washington Wizards. How's that to show you how much time has passed? A couple of these teams have went through multiple phases in the time that LeBron has been in the NBA Finals. DeMarcus Cousins wasn't yet the angry face of the Sacramento Kings at the time. As a matter of fact, they looked to be headed upwards being led by Rookie of the Year Tyreek Evans who would go on to average 20 points for the only time in his career. And if you can believe it, Derrick Rose had yet to sustain a single significant injury. You heard that right, the last time LeBron wasn't in the finals, nobody had even so much as cracked a Derrick Rose injury joke. On top of that, he hadn't even won an MVP yet and nobody had a clue that he'd be hoisting that trophy the very next season. And well yeah, the Nets still sucked. <laughs> the only significant thing here is that they weren't even the Brooklyn Nets yet, they still had a few more years being stationed in New Jersey. And one more hilarious side note in this section. Ricky Davis, the guy who thought LeBron was being drafted to help him to score, <laughs> yeah, he was still an NBA player in 2010 averaging only 4 points a game for the Los Angeles Clippers. The All-NBA First Team that year included names such as Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, and Dwight Howard. The defensive first team had Gerald Wallace on it, the same Gerald Wallace that was playing for the contending Kings back in like 01 and 02. And the Eastern Conference All-Star Team had Gerald Wallace, along with David Lee and Allen Iverson. In the West, Chris Kamen, Zach Randolph, Chauncey Billups, and Jason Kidd were also all-stars. Carmelo, Kobe, and Wade were all still top 5 scorers in the league, meanwhile Monte Ellis, Danny Granger, and Amari Stoudemire were in the top 10. Baron Davis and Devin Harris were still top 10 assist guys, meanwhile Dwight Howard and Marcus Canby led the league in rebounding. Of course, LeBron himself ran away with the MVP, but just to give an idea of how long ago this was, Kobe, Howard, Wade, Melo, Nowitzki, and Nash also received considerations. On top of that, Shaquille O'Neal and Rasheed Wallace were still considered important pieces on contending teams. Yeah, the Cavs signed a 36-year-old Shaq hoping he would push Cleveland over the hump and Boston signed Rasheed Wallace to the bench to help make a run at the title. Well, one of those actually worked out. The last time LeBron wasn't in the finals, dare I say there was actually some parody in the league. 
In the playoffs, we were looking at the Celtics, Cavaliers, Magic, Spurs, Mavericks, and Lakers as teams that could potentially win the championship. Nobody knew the Suns would come within two games of the finals, and the media started counting out the Celtics about halfway through that season, saying that they wouldn't be able to beat the Cavs or Dwight Howard's Magic. The Celtics then went on to meet Cleveland in the second round and send LeBron home for the second time in three years in what definitely did seem like it'd be his last game with the Cavaliers. And thus, LeBron was fed up with facing superior teams with nothing but average talent and decided to create his own superior teams that nobody in the East would ever be able to beat. Of course, that was until Kyrie left and the Cavaliers fell apart and now he's kind of back in the same place he was before, only a little bit worse because this time his teammates are forgetting the score and crucial moments of championship series. I, I don't know what's going on right now, I can't explain it. And for the last measuring stick of how much time has passed, only four NBA players remain active from the last final series that was played without LeBron James. Those four would be Pau Gasol, Rajon Rondo, Tony Allen, and Kendrick Perkins who's like barely active. I, I don't really know if you can count him as active though. <laughs> I mean, he's on the Cavs bench for the finals and they signed him, but he doesn't really wear jerseys. I, oh, whatever, he counts as active. And that, my friends, is what the NBA looked like the last time LeBron James wasn't playing in the NBA finals.